All right, so suppose uh, you're walking a, your dog down the street, and I come up and I say, ah, you know, you're, you're taking good care of the dog. It's, you know, it's a good-looking dog. And I say, huh, but wait a second, no bestiality. You see, I don't want to whip out my erect cock and stick it up the dog's ass, you see. That would be odd, uh, awkward, troubling. And, and we have a very similar phenomenon when, uh, when people say no homo. So when you, you know, you compliment a guy, but you don't want it to be interpreted as a pass, you say no homo, <laughs> which is really the silliest thing in the world, because most of these things are not passes, or at least consciously. Um, so the only person introducing sex or sexuality into the mix is the person who's saying there's no sexuality here. Um, there's a, certainly an element of thou protest too much. So, you know, if let's say uh, you, you throw your keys to a valet and then the valet is like, I won't steal your car, then you'll know like something is wrong because he might actually steal the car. You know, why, why make a big deal out of it if it's not a big deal? Okay. And the answer to that, as with the answer to a lot of these uh, weird things that happen around same-sex sex in this society, the answer is in chapter four. We do know that most men, not most men, not sm some, most men are attracted to other men. And not entirely consciously, so this is how it bubbles up, okay? So most men are not attracted, or most men are attracted, but not consciously, so every time they say something nice to another guy, ooh, it could be sexual. But how could it be sexual if you're not thinking that it's sexual? Okay. So anyways, it's all very silly stuff, and if you want to read uh, more on that, see Chapter 4 of Brero. I, I did want to share two experiences I've had, or two, two, yeah, two experiences I've had with, um, with, with this kind of, I don't want things to be interpreted gay, uh, sort of what things, where it was revealed that there must be something more going on because it was all very innocent and, and very non-sexual. So I remember in middle school, we were playing football and, and two guys ended up uh, landing on top of each other in a very awkward position. And uh, I think one guy's, um, one guy's hands ended up in another guy's pants or something. And I mean, you know, he could have broken his hand or something or somebody could have gotten seriously hurt. And he was like, oh, I'm not gay. I'm not gay. It's like... Really, that's your biggest concern? Like, you could have been seriously injured here, but hey, apparently you, you must tell the world that you are not a, a, a homosexual, right? Uh, and again, where does that come from? Where does it come If it was not sexual at all, then why would you, why, why would that be your first thought? Well, again, most men are attracted to other men, uh, not consciously, so this is how it bubbles up. Chapter four. Uh, another one was a guy... Okay, so so I was I was friends with this guy in high school, and we were on the swim team together, water polo team together, and I think we, we were waiting for a van to take us to a swim meet, I think. And he started tackling me out. This was after school, and he started tackling me. And a funny little story, a, a teacher walks by, and, you know, he was off the clock at that point, so he just, like, looks at me. He's like, ugh. <laughs> but he, he doesn't care. So we're just, like, wrestling in the grass. Then we get on the van, and he continues wrestling on the back, and we, we have this freshman in between us, so we're like wrestling on top over him. And, I mean, to be honest, I did like the guy. I did. I quite did like the guy, but there was nothing sexual per se about any of that. It was just two guys wrestling around. Well, but, again, Drero, right? But, but there was nothing, at least, that was overtly sexual about it. Now, by the time we got to the swim place, um, the back of the van actually fogged up. <laughs> we were wrestling, yeah, for like 30 minutes. And some guys were like, oh, that's so gay. And it was very interesting because, like, the next day, like, I could immediately see that he was like, uh oh, I don't want anyone to interpret this as gay. And, like, the next day and, like, the next couple of days, the guy would never, he wouldn't talk to me. You know, he would just be, like, completely cold. And see, the thing for me was, if this wasn't anything sexual, if there wasn't anything, you know, anything sexual about it, then why make a big deal about it? If there was genuinely nothing there, then so then there was nothing there. Then what is there to talk about? Why why would you give me a cold shoulder and not talk to me? Uh, a similar thing happened with the same guy. We uh, we had a couple free periods together uh, one year, 
and you know studying and reading well that's boring so we 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 used to go into like bathrooms and like make paper towels and make them wet and like throw them at each other <laughs> yeah and uh you know and, and we would actually go around campus going from bathroom to bathroom and and one of the bathrooms i remember we were just like wrestling around again and yet again like the next day he wouldn't talk to me like he would just ignore me I was like, what the fuck? Like, did you go home and think about this? Uh, you know, and if so, if there's nothing sexual there, then why are we making a big deal about it? Why are we pretending? Yeah. So anyways, that's just that. And I just want to uh, put that up and uh, see you next time.